high school. They graduated Thursday night. They're going to have a party following. So we invite everyone to stay and enjoy some cake and ice cream and the festivities with us to celebrate their victory of overcoming high school. Amen? Amen. And also in the back they have some extra bake sale items from yesterday if you would like to go back there and pick one up. That would help the youth out for things such as the upcoming uh, camp meeting, youth, youth camp, and things of that nature. Right now, we're going to play an instrumental. We're going to have our penny march.
gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. And I know that you can do Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you're doing that, you can worship your way back to your seats. At this time, our smaller classes, all our classes except for our teen classes, can be dismissed to go to their Sunday school classes. <clears throat> Once again, so very thankful that you are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As our ushers come to take up our offering and tithing this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every one that's here. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you bless this offering today. Bless it for your kingdom and bless it for your glory. Bless it to the ones that have and the ones that have not. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say amen. Amen. A couple of announcements to finish out. Remember tomorrow night prayer at 7 o'clock. Uh, 
Tuesday night, Hope at 6.30, Wednesday night, right back here, 7 o'clock for Ignite, Bible study, whatever the Lord has in store for us. Then Thursday night, the Women on a Mission at 6.30. Uh, if you have your calendars, the fri- this Friday night was a thing that was planned for Brother and Sister Chris's house. Um, they postponed that till next week. They forgot they had a prior engagement that they need to take care of this Friday night. So that will be moved to the next Friday night. But all of our youth is still here, our teenagers. This Friday night at Myers Bend at 7.30, Brother Jonathan Vasquez, I believe, will be preaching the statewide youth rally. They're inviting everybody to come. There will be food and games to follow. So if you would like to go, it will be at Myers Bend this Friday night at 7.30. You probably don't want to miss that. It will probably be a great time in the Lord. Saturday night, but ain't that awesome? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We were busy this week and then all the way into next Sunday. But this Saturday is F3 at 5 p.m. It's going to be the Mexican theme. We're going to have tacos and things of that nature. We're going to come together with some great fellowship, play games, have a great time. We're looking forward to that. Amen? Oh, amen? Amen. If you're able and you can stand, we'd like to go, go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We have needs in the house, of course. My brother McCall's dad is in need of prayer. My brother-in-law, Alan Joyner, still needing prayer. Uh, Mr. Wayne Hawkins needing prayer. Um, Remember him. There's a great report for Sister Irma. Uh, We talked about it Wednesday night, but we'll say it again this morning. It's not near as bad because the Lord has already intervened on her behalf. Very small, small compared to what they thought it was, and it's only going to be about five radiation treatments, no chemo. But we're going to believe that God can step in and take care of even that. Amen? If you believe that with me, can you stretch both of your hands towards heaven? Lift your voices as high as you can in your faith, and let's call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for bringing us back to your house. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us this week. Lord, we give you praise and honor as this new week starts. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, but there's needs in this house that only you can see, Lord. And we ask that you move in behalf of each and every one of them. Touch Brother McCall's dad. Touch Alan Joyner, Wayne Hawkins. Lord, continue to bless and touch Sister Irma and completely annihilate the cancer that's come against her body. Lord, we pray for your divine healing to be in each and every situation that wasn't even mentioned today. So by the power of your name, the authority of your word work, heal, touch deliver like only that you can anoint this service Lord each and every aspect Lord and we give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus name hallelujah put your hands together hallelujah in a voice of triumph hallelujah y'all worship with us as we sing
today and you're battling something in your spirit today, do like that chorus says and declare it and say it with me. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. If you're here today and you're hurting in your body, declare it with us. I'm going to see a victory. Give God praise. I'm going to see a victory. What a God. What a God. Nobody like Jesus. That's it. Praise him. Worship him. Oh, you're turning, you're turning around. You're turning it around. Turning it in my favor, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him a moment. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Lord, for the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. 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 You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. Turn it all around. Turn it all around. You turn it for good. One more time. You Worship your way back to your seats. Thank you for being a part of this service today, along with next Friday night youth rally that uh, you will probably want to be a part of. Also, we have another graduation going on, and that's uh, uh, Sister Caroline, and we're so excited for her. We've had five, and and, uh, and uh, we're so thankful for the perseverance of these guys when it was time to just drop out and push on through. I'm, I'm glad they go through service, through school, and they come out apostolic still. We still do that. Amen. Amen. And there's nobody like Jesus. If you get done with your education and all of that, you can never, you should never forget about the one who made it all possible. And that's our Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus is what every knee is going to bow to. Every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. The Father. Amen. Thank you all for being a part. Uh, and as I understand it, our community is going to be ready in the next few days and you're going to be able to see the lyrics back on the screen. Somebody say thank the Lord for that. Folks want to know what's being said and sung and and uh, we bought this stuff. The software was uh, uh, out of date for what we were trying to do and so we have been uh, working to get that established. Thank you for 
understanding and uh, just trusting that we know the songs that are on the back wall. But y'all thought we'd just quote them, they they back there. So anyway, you stay around long enough, you'll know them too. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless our teen class and the other classes that need to be dismissed. And thank you to our teachers for staying in and worshiping with us and uh, inviting the presence of the Lord in the house. Amen. Praise God. I'm so excited for these teens. Uh, excited to have their teacher teaching them. Hallelujah. They're going to be very successful. Aren't they right now? Hey, I ain't done, Sister Elizabeth. We ain't done. Come on back. Just le- You can't be leaving. You got work to do. this bad, sometimes I'm worse, Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, thank you to all our visitors for being here, we're going to be celebrating, Uh, won't be a long drawn out deal, but uh, we'll be celebrating graduating, those that are graduating after the service. You want to be a blessing to them, walk by and give them a hundred dollar bill apiece. Wasn't saying no to none of them scholarships the other day. I was just saying no. They'll, they'll accept it. I've even seen on Facebook where they want cash out. They cool with cash out too. So go find their post. They deserve it. They've worked hard. If you have it, you ought to be a blessing to them. If nothing else, you ought to put your arm around them and say, I'm proud of you. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to start reading verse 1. You probably never read this scripture before. So, maybe I'll read it. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long. Everybody say charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, endureth all things. I left one out, didn't I? Hopeth all things. Charity hopeth all things. I want to talk to us for a little bit. This thought, the sound of hope. The sound of hope. Thank you, Lord. For your word, help me do a good job. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. I bless you. You can be seated. Put a timer on just so you know I'm conscious. work last Sunday, they, they went even off, I was halfway done, I only had the timer set for 40 minutes, you laughing or not, <laughs> that was the joke, amen, hopefully the alarm is not too loud, I don't know when it's supposed to be, they say the sound of hope. The Bible said, faith cometh by hearing, 
thing by the word of the Lord. If you're going to get faith, you're going to hear it. But you're not going to get faith from just anywhere. You're going to get faith from the word of the Lord. Now, there is what is called the power of positive thinking. And positive thinking comes from probably positive speaking, positive hearing. And, uh, but something different about Something different about just somebody speaking positively, optimistically, and somebody that can speak faith. Faith is more than just optimism. Faith literally calls those things that be not as though they were. Faith will look at a mountain and not just talk talk optimistically about how to climb it. But faith will look at it and declare what would be impossible. Be thou cast into the sea. And The only way for you to have that kind of faith is for you to hear that kind of faith. And the only way to hear that kind of faith is God chose by the foolishness of preaching. And so that comes from the Word of God. When the Word of God is declared, I believe, I believe that the promises of the Lord are yea and amen. And I believe every part of that book. I I really believe, I really believe that when the prophet said, go borrow all the vessels, borrow not a few to the little lady. She brought them back and the little cruise of oil never ran out. That's faith, folks. I believe it happened. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm believing, just like we prayed the other day, and got Sister Irma a prayer cloth. Uh, you know, I, I always pray for everybody that I know in this church. <laughs> then those I don't know, I say, God, you know them. That's a good problem to have. There's some that I don't know. There's people here I'm just meeting today for the first time. Isn't that incredible? Hallelujah. So glad. But... Um, been always praying for Sister Irma concerning this cancer, but I remember when I first found it out, it was a prayer meeting. I got a prayer cloth, I believe, from the prayer meeting. Okay, sent a prayer cloth home. Maybe it was on a Sunday night, and I oh, that's what it was. I believe it was Sunday night, and I asked Sister Sharon. I said, "Did you deliver that?" It was Monday night prayer meeting. I said, "Did you li- deliver that today?" She said, "Oh yes." She said, "I delivered that last night." She didn't hesitate. She went on over there, wasn't worried about her being in the bed. Hey, kid, got this for you. I believe in the prayer cloth. Amen. And um, I didn't know how bad it was. All I know is when I hear cancer, I know that I've got a mama that's laying in a grave somewhere. Cancer is not anything to play with. You hear that C word, it, and, it's, and it's affected your family. You know that it's a it's a it's a difficult thing, and it's time to pray. And we did, and God started moving. And she's got a spot about the size of a pea. It wasn't it wasn't supposed to be like. And she's excited that she only has five treatments of radiation, as I understand, the other night. And you know what she said? She said, I've got a sister that's got some had clots. They were having to look at it, but every one of them, she had been praying for it. Every one of them benign. Praise God. Everything's going to be all right. But faith declared. Faith declared. No radiation. That's what we're believing for. Well, what if she does? What if she does? See, you see, 
See, the, the enemy likes for us to uh, zip our lip because the power of life and death are in the tongue. I remember my grandmother was fighting uh, cancer and uh, she noticed before she realized that it was cancer, it was uh, there was a tumor of sorts that had came up in the in, in her stomach and uh, and it just continued to grow until it was about the size of a basketball well went in to get it checked out and it was if I remember right her spleen had uh, cancer in it they did bone marrow and the only other uh, just checking her bone marrow to see uh, if they could remove the spleen, because the only place, other place that, if I remember right, that she could produce blood was from there. And when they checked the bone marrow, she wasn't producing blood there, so they couldn't remove uh, where the cancer was. And so it was just, she was just stuck in this situation. Every morning, she would wake up. Five to six o'clock in the morning. I can't remember if it was five or six. Every morning and she would read her Bible and study. And it didn't matter how sick she was or whatever. She did that. As a matter of fact, the day that she passed away, she woke up uh, to do her study. And that that was that was when, right, right before she, actually at six o'clock when she normally woke up, sorry, was when she passed away. When she normally woke up with the Tell me God don't notice the relationship between you and him. God knows that's not true. But uh, I remember I was in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. And uh, I had an uncle that called me and, and he said, man, I just want you to know your grandma is just about to go. I said, because uh, I'd been praying, just believing God that she didn't. I said, if anything, I know Grandma wants to live. You know, if she could get her way, I don't think she wants to die. And I said, I just, uh, if everybody else in that hospital has given up, would you for me never give up? I said, I am speaking life and believing God. To deliver, heal my grandma. I was close to grandma. And uh, so I continue to do that. One day, now I know, folks, that I'm just I'm just giving you examples of the power of life and death in the tongue. One day I got so busy, I was moving my brother-in-law back to uh, Illinois. And... Uh, I got really busy one day when I got out that morning. I was busy all day long. And every other day, I made sure that I said, God, I, I speak life in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring life. I'm, de I'm declaring healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By your stripes, we're healed. I plead the blood over my grandma. I just kept speaking life. That day. I did not do it and got a phone call the next morning that she had passed. Now, are you trying to say you got all that? It's not what I'm saying. God does, and I was leaning on his word, but God has a plan, and God's not going to deny his word, and faith is, now, he's a sovereign God. I said he's a sovereign God, and God can do whatever he wants to do. I'm not God. But I'm going to have faith in the book. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. And if God said I can have it, then I'm going to declare it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to see it. Oh, something hit me the other day. Oh, hallelujah. S something hit me the other day. And, uh, and, and, and just... And I know it's no, it's no big deal, but when you suffer through fighting for your faith 
and you've prayed for some, and it looks like they get sicker. And somebody said, I need you to pray for somebody else. And I said, I just want you to know my record ain't real good here. First of all, John Boy ain't got the power. He does. And we just got to declare it. But if you, if you, if you, you, you have to trust the sovereign God to do what God's going to do and just know that he's got a plan. What you've got to do is operate by faith, faith that God's going to do what's right, and faith that the book is right, and speak and declare it, and you think, well, it just didn't turn out the way I thought. It turned out the way God planned it, and it doesn't change the fact that the Word of God is true. You've got to hang on to faith. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to preach I'm gonna preach it today because you need to hear it. Some of you are wrestling with your faith today, and the enemy has got you in turmoil. And there are times when you're wondering, my God, does he even, he even hear me? I'm crying out to him. Does he? Listen, Daniel cried and prayed 21 days. When the angel got there, you know the story. He said, I, I just want you to know, Daniel, that God heard you 21 days ago. He said, but I was fighting with a prince in the power of Persia. There was a stronghold that was between me and you. Hallelujah. I had the message. I was bringing it to you, but it's 21 days before I could get to you. What's amazing to me is that the angel couldn't get through, but the prayer did in spite of what the prayer that you pray is more powerful than the angel that has been sent. You've got to have faith in that. You have got to trust that, that God hears me. And when it seems like he's not hearing you and you're not getting the answer that you want, it doesn't mean that he didn't hear you. It means that there's something that's going on in the spirit realm. And in your patience, possess ye your soul. You've got to keep joy when it seems like he's not answering your prayer. When it seems like he's not working it out. You've got to know that in his timing, it's going to be okay. I'm just going to trust him. For There's a lot I don't know. But there's one thing I do know. That all things work together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. I feel the Holy Ghost today. You're just going to trust Him. Somebody say, I'm going to hang on to faith. Man, I tell you what, we need to hear this kind of preaching. I'm telling you right now, Dr. Phil ain't going to do it for you. I ain't hating on Phil. Hallelujah. Amen. The psychiatrist ain't going to fix it for you. I'm not trying to hate on them. I'm going to tell you what's going to help us is when we get faith in God. And the only way you can get faith in God is to hear the Word of God. Sometimes it feels like you're just hanging on by a thread. Uh, Charles Swindoll, he said, life is 10% what happens to us, but 90% you heard it, how we react to it. I'm telling you, if the enemy can blindside you, depress you, and discourage you, he's going to do it. It is his objective. It is his, it is his main focus to discourage the minds of Christians who dare to believe God in the face of adversity. Listen, the Bible said that God, which the psalm said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm just talking about food. But we're not talking about food. We weren't saying, hey, here's your biscuit in the presence of your enemies. Not talking about sustaining you. When you talk about tables in the scripture, generals, generals and warriors and people of conquest walked up to the table. 
and they had a plan. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, there's still a table there that God has prepared. He has a strategy when it seems like you're outnumbered. When it seems like you ain't got nothing left, God's got a plan and God's got a table. And here's the thing. This is what you got to grab a hold of. He's prepared the table in the presence of your... He's prepared. In other words, he knew the enemy was coming before the enemy ever got there. Before you ever seen them coming, he knew it was there. And he said, I've got a strategy right now against the plot of the enemy that's coming against you. And what's got to happen is, is you've got to say, all right, God, you've got a plan now. Anoint my eyes to see what I'm hearing. I've got to see this now. I've got to see this. It, it would take you to Elisha. When Elisha's standing out there with his servants and all the Syrians... Come come around and 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 they and they've lined everywhere and there's a bunch of them and and all of a sudden uh, he he's a little afraid the servant is Elisha walks over and puts his hands on his eyes, amen and uh, and and he's told him already there's more of this forest thing that's against us he said now God opened his eyes and when he opened up his eyes he was able to say what Elisha already seen and heard. There are more than that are for us than that are against us. So the reality is, is just because you can't see it with a natural eye doesn't mean it ain't happening right now. God's got a plan. Somebody say, God's got a plan. What you got to do is you got to keep hanging on to hope. I have hope when trouble comes my way. I have hope, oh, for Jesus is there to stay. I have hope, oh, yeah. When things are not well with me, I have hope, such a beautiful hope that sets me free. Brothers and sisters, it may feel like that you're in bondage, but as long as there's hope that you're entangled with, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the name, the only saving name, the only delivering name of Jesus Christ, amen, 10,000 may rise on the left and a thousand on the right. Come on, it doesn't matter what happens. If God be for me, if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? I'm going to encourage everybody I can look at today. If God be for you, ladies and gentlemen, the whole world can be against you and you're still the majority because of the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the spoken word of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of stuff I don't have figured out. A lot of stuff I don't have figured out. But one thing I do have figured out is that his grace is sufficient and that he, he's going to carry me. Everybody all right? I may have more months at the end of my money, but God's, God's going to carry me. Say nobody likes me. Say I have hope. Somebody say I've heard of a hope. My wife had a stroke uh, back in July, March the 11th. And uh, I had a lady come in, talk to me, and she said, now faith is different than sick. Because I know you've seen healings and miracles and stuff, but it seems like God's not answering the prayer for you right now. She said, but you've got to learn how to trust him when you can't declare things and, it, and the outcome be what you wanted in the moment that you wanted. She said, in your patience, I've already quoted it, in your patience, possess you your soul. Then she said, now it doesn't mean that you don't have but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? Put down up his wings as a dove. 
you'll wait on the Lord. And in your patience, trust him and keep hoping. You've got you've to really love God, not just your brothers and sisters. You've got to be long-suffering. Not that you're getting God in a pickle here. I mean, you're not, you're not making him nervous. But if you're going to make it, you, you, you're going to have to trust him even through the long-suffering. You're going to have to have hope in him. Charity suffers long. Charity is kind. Charity believes in him. Charity endureth. Charity hopeth. That means I was hoping today, and it didn't happen. But I don't just hope on Sunday. I hope on Monday. Why? Because I still love him. Man, when Blue Monday gets done, Tuesday's going to roll around. I'm just going to keep on hoping in the Lord. My hope is built on Jesus Christ. My hope is built on His righteousness, on His way. Hallelujah. Some of you are wondering about this right here. That uh, picture seems a little depressing, to say the least. That picture was painted by George Frederick Watts. There's two versions of it. This is the most common version of it. Painted back in 1886. It was after the death of his granddaughter. And it's a picture of a blindfolded woman sitting upon a globe. How many know that there's so many times that you feel like you're on top of the world? And then all of a sudden, it all falls apart. There she sat, blindfolded, and she's got a liar in her arm. And she's leaning in toward, and I know that you can't hardly see it here, Pixelated a little here, but maybe the other picture actually did a little more justice. She's leaning in toward the musical instrument, the lyre. It's not a harp. It's a little different than a harp. And uh, if you will notice that down here in her lap, if you could see it, I don't know. But there are a lot of strings that are just laying in her lap. And the only thing that she's got left is one string. Somebody asked him, said, why is she blindfolded? He said, because she's not leaning toward what she can see. She's leaning into what she can hear. And she's listening, not by sight, but by heart. And when it looks like it's all said and done, and it's over with, and there's nothing left, one string left, she leans in toward the instrument. That brings about in her life the most beautiful music. And she listens closely to hear the melody, the sound of hope. After jobs are gone, after health is gone. After wealth is gone, after past and history has left you 
decimated, devastated, discouraged. This painting is not of despair. But this painting is one of hope that said, as long as I still got one string left, I'm going to listen for the sounds of hope. Boy, I thought that, now I'm just telling you, just looking at it, I know it kind of seems bleak. It seems the colors are depressing to me. It doesn't seem like it's all uh, good to me. But when you hear the story behind the picture, it brings about some, uh, some kind of faith. And it brings about a, a stability where it concerns your own life. And it looks like there's so much that's out of reach. But as long as I got one string left of hope... I'm just going I'm just going to love and I'm going to hope I'm going to endure and I'm going to believe and I'm not turning loose and I'm not giving in. What did you come to preach today? I've come to preach we need our hope back. I said we need our hope back. You you know no you don't need to tie in to the rest of the stuff that says because you've lost this and you've lost that that you've lost everything. No, as long as you've got hope, as long as you've got breath, as long as you've got Jesus, you're gonna be all right and you're gonna make it. Somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say we need hope today. Hallelujah. Well, you don't believe we need hope today. Hey, I'll tell you what. Let me, let me give you a little hope. Despite what you feel about what this man did I, and the time that he did it is of no concern to me at this point because we've had a victory and I'm thankful for it, man. Brother Tony Spell took a stand back when they were trying to mandate that the churches be closed. Never critical of other churches being closed, just feeling like by conviction that he needed to keep the doors open, did so. And think that he wound up with some six arrests. Could have been six months to each. Bill and I and I had friends that scared to death to go down there and stand with him. You, uh, that must be a lonely place when somebody's got one thread left and nobody will stand with him. But when you got conviction, you you take the stand anyway. But anyway, so I went down there. I had people calling me, brother Chris. Man, what in the world? I seen you down there on that Facebook Live with that brother. He's crazy. I said, he's my brother. Hallelujah. So, so we, we were down there at that thing, and I'm telling you, it got crazy. The, all the protesting that was going on, people driving by, cussing and swearing and acting crazy. And... Uh, just the other day, maybe the day before yesterday, Friday, Brother Tony Spell gets a call because this has went to the federal judges. And uh, he gets a call from his lawyer and his attorney and said, we won. We won. It was unconstitutional. But... Now, now, this is, there's seven judges and six of them said it's unconstitutional what they did to the, not just Brother Spell, to the churches. That's you. So it wasn't just a bunch of junk we was all saying, right? Every one of us were fighting for a good cause. And it wasn't that Brother Spell was on trial at this point, in my feelings of it, 
the Constitution was on the wall. Right? So anyhow, it gave me as a pastor hope again in our rights and in our Constitution. Whether you agree with the way he did it or not, that's immaterial. But it certainly feels good that there's a judge somewhere in Louisiana. At least six of them that sit uh, in the highest judge in, our, in the highest court of our state that said this was against the Constitution. And it made me feel good that somebody would take a stand and breathe life into that Constitution again. For me. Because I don't know about you, I'm starting to see it get a little stiff and rigor mortis setting in. Marriage. Of the Constitution. But I was glad to see some life there. Why are you being political? I'm not. I'm just telling you. And I don't want to be a doomsday haller here. But you need to know that the church is where your hope is. I didn't, I didn't know that for 60 days in Shanghai, China, I know it's no big deal to you what's going on in China. But as of Friday, some 60 days, a particular area in Shanghai, China, and I don't know if it's the whole of Shanghai, some 60 days they've had them, uh, some of them padlocked in their building. Many of them, all they've got is a piece of paper over it, and if they needed to get out, they could get out, but there would be repercussions for them getting out. All because of still dealing with COVID in China. What are you trying to say? This is what I'm trying to say, that I don't know how easy it's going to be for them to do that here in the United States after what we've just went through. But I can tell you right now, it's coming. And they're going to be trying to do something. And what I'm excited about is I got a little hope that there's some judges, at least in the state of Louisiana, that's saying don't mess with the church. It's still a place where they can go get hope and help. Because when they shut Walmart down, and when they shut Target down, <laughs> and when they shut Max down, and when they shut this and that and the other down, the church ain't going to have no padlock on it because you can't take that right away from them because they didn't give that right. God gave that right to us, and there's still hope at the church. We're going to need the church. You hear me? There was a reason why he said, Forsaken not the assembling of yourself as a man or some have. But as you see the day approaching, so much the more. You need to get to the house of God. Because I'm telling you, if your pulpit is your TV, if your pulpit is your Facebook, if your pulpit is your Rumble, if your pulpit, uh, amen, is your TikTok, your Instagram, your Snapchat, or whatever social media is out there, brothers and sisters, uh, you're going to be pretty depressed but if your hope is in a pulpit in an apostolic church where somebody is declaring the word of the Lord hey through many dangers toils and snares we have already come and his grace is what's brought you 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 can roll your lip out all you want to but it makes me excited to know that we've got a church not just a church but the church and it's the church that God said he's going to build and this church he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it it's still the safest place on the planet the church is where hope is the church is where hope is hallelujah so it may be the one string left but it's enough to hear the heartbeat of a God who loves his people So just play on that one string. Listen closely. And you'll hear, I'll never leave you. I'll 
heaven and say, Thank you, Lord. I'll be with you always. That's the sound like I'm home. The legend is. Italian violinist Nicola Paganini was playing a difficult piece of music before a large audience. Suddenly, one string on his violin broke, and he continued to play. Then all of a sudden, as he continued to play, the second string broke. Finally, the third string broke. And on one string, he played and finished that composition on one string. When the applause finally stopped, he nodded at the conductor to begin the encore with one string. And the violinist smiled at the audience and shouted, Paganini! And one string. And placing the instrument under his chin again, <laughs> he began to play that beautiful composition to the best of his ability. The history of how Paganini began composing pieces for a single string, always the G string, the lowest of strings on the violin. He was, for a time when he was young, head musician for Napoleon's sister, the Princess of Lucca, Italy. I guess is how you say it. He fancied a young woman, and with this in mind, he wrote a piece called The Love Duet, in which, in which he took off the two middle strings, leaving the highest and the lowest, which represented the female and male respectively. And he told a love story on these two strings, which everyone in the audience clearly Following this, the young woman said to him, if you can do that with just two strings, can you or could you do it with just one? And if you could, I'd like to see it. And it is said that he composed his first piece with just one string. And he went on to compose many others. I'm going to just quit with this. But the reality is, is that many times in life, it seems like we've lost every other avenue that we always had slipped out of our hand, stand out there, just one string. I got good news for you. The book said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. God of the Old Testament robed himself in flesh, ended up in the New Testament, Emmanuel, not a second string. When you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And he is the culprit for all of this. You hear the whistle of the breeze. Dirt. Bird. 
explore the line. Whatever it is in nature that is that point of God, spoke it all into existence. He sees a sparrow when it croaks. How much more does he see? Don't be sad because all you got is one string left. At the end of the day, you can't say, look what I have done. All you can say is, look what the Lord has done. Would you stand to your feet today? Hallelujah. Somebody say, I have hope. Somebody say, I ain't letting go of hope. I'm telling you, we may lose a lot of stuff. I ain't losing hope. I watched my mom take her last breath. I didn't lose mine. Why? Because I still had hope. Paul said it like this, if I had hope only in this life, I'd be of most men miserable. My hope ain't in here. My hope is principalities and powers they're not going to mess me up. Things present, things to come, not going to mess me up. My hope is nothing shall separate me. You can bend the bow across that particular string <laughs> as hard as you want to, but he's got me. And I'm always going to hear the melody of his heartbeat that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Aren't you glad you got a God? That's with you, always, even unto the end of the world. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for this great group of people. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that we have. Thank you for the hope that we have. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives and how that you're sovereign and you're just God and God alone. Thank you, Lord, that you're somebody we can trust. Your mercy is everlasting, and it endures, God, and I thank you for that. I pray, God, that you would strengthen every man, woman in this building today and cause them to feel the strength of your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were in all points tempted like as we yet without sin, but you overcame for us. You paid the price. My hope is in you. We stand here today because of you. Hold on to our hope. Never let us go. Take us through whatever you've got to take us through. And on the other side, we'll give you praise. We'll give you praise. We won't even smell like smoke. You sung in the fiery furnace that we go through. You're going to keep us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I wanted to make mention of this. The Sunday school kids are uh, raising money for the mission. We're going we're gonna to take our missions offering and our youth camp this year. The sun, everybody say, the Sunday school kids. Well, this gives me a lot of hope for you. The Sunday school kids have raised $476 alone. That's not including the regular offering that they give. $476 for a foreign mission uh, offering that we're going to send um, and uh, so on and so on. So God bless you. Thank you for being a part of service. Tonight is going to be awesome. We've got uh, a celebration with our uh, graduates and their families, and I think they've got a name over the table, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to go back there and just be a blessing, be a friend, and just celebrate with them, they did an incredible job. We've got a valedictorian here. We've got a valedictorian. When I, when I showed up at your graduation, I thought, man, that don't look like her. But it was you up there speaking, wasn't it? You did a great job, girl. I'm proud of you. And you put God in your speech, and I think you did awesome. I love you. Amen. To all of them, God bless you. Congratulations to you. And she's graduating this Friday night if you want to go. And I've heard some's going to be able to be there. So we're celebrating with you. We're dismissing you to the Lord.